We've been relatively positive through, throughout this, this year when everyone was extremely negative going into 2019. And, you know, the Fed is part of that. It's not everything. The data has continued to be fairly positive, moderating, but still positive. And I think the Fed is doing a pretty good job of taking a moderate approach, given that there are these mixed signals. You've got headwinds in, in the form of trade and slowdown in Europe, and yet the U.S. economy is still growing and expanding. So I think a very measured approach, a 25 basis point cut, uh, would be appropriate. And of course, I'm the same guy that said what they did last time was appropriate. And then I think a nanosecond after I went off the air in a conversation <laughs> yeah. with you, President Trump slaps on the announcement that, you know, September 1, we're going to have massive tariffs. And, and all of a sudden, the, uh, the market puked a little bit there. Yeah, we so, all you know, be have, careful what I have to say. Well, we, we all have whiplash, <laughs> I think, from, from that event. Craig, it does, though, raise the question of which is more important, you know, a Fed rate cut right now or uh, some better news flow on trade, which we have gotten over the past week or so. Um, what do you think? Oh, I think the, the trade news is it would be a lot bigger. It's pretty much factored in, like you guys have been saying, that this is going to happen. Um, I would imagine boards across the country uh, of U.S. corporations are sitting around thinking, you know, these low interest rates, we need to be borrowing money and looking for acquisitions. We're in a slow growth environment. Absolutely. How do we make our businesses grow faster? So I think that's probably conversations you're seeing all over the place. Do you, that's incredibly bullish, I believe. It might be bullish in the short term, Craig, but is that not what you want, you know, to see in, in terms yeah. of discipline in to, the longer run? So how? Yeah, uh, you don't want to get over. You don't want to get over leverage, but sure. companies with really good balance sheets, which there are quite a number of those, that are in a slow growth environment. That, I mean, what a way to buy small and mid cap companies uh, to, to boost your growth and. And, you know, as the Fed continues to ease, it's only going to get easier out there, I believe, for corporations. And, you know, look at look at the pricing of housing. I mean, a year ago, uh, housing, houses were 25 percent more expensive because of interest rates. If you if you're uh, sure. if you're mortgaging a house. Yeah. So um, these are all big, you know, tax cuts to the to the general population that it will show up, I believe, especially as we go into, okay. uh, you know, the Christmas season. And you you've will. got a, a couple of names here. You like Century Communities, an entry-level home builder, Norwegian Cruise Lines, NCR is a turnaround situation. Steve, let me bring you in, though, and just, again, to kind of focus for a I second. I agree with all those picks, by the way. <laughs> on what's happened over the last <laughs> day or, or so. Um, all of a sudden, the, the Fed has to come out this morning and provide more liquidity <laughs> to the market because, ironically, even though it's cut rates and is about to do so again, it can't keep rates down. They're drifting up because of problems in the short-term repo markets. It's, it's wonky to talk about, but how much of a problem is this for them if they're losing control of setting that short-term policy rate? Um, I just talked to somebody in this market, and they're very critical of the New York Fed and the New York Fed not reading the writing on the wall. This is something that was somewhat predictable, how much extra liquidity was needed in the market. You know, the Fed came in this morning short rate spiked up. It's unclear at this point whether or not the New York Fed has control. There is no person in charge of the desk right now. The person who was in charge of the desk, the New York desk, which does these operations, left. There's an interim yes. person there now. Apparently there's a search committee right now looking for that other person. There are doubts among people in the market that the Fed has control of this, that the but New York it, Fed listen, if, has if they, control of this market. When you just laid out this whole beautiful thing about the rate cut that might be coming tomorrow, if the rate doesn't actually move down, that cut doesn't accomplish a whole heck of a lot. I, I think that's right, especially in the short end of the market. It's something I, I think the good news here is this is not a credit risk problem. Absolutely. This is very different from what this is a technical problem. And it's even something Forgive the wonkiness. It's a stupid thing. We were told that the market sets its rates in the morning and the Fed only comes in in the later morning. So by the time the Fed came in at nine o'clock or nine thirty today, dealers were already funded. If that happens again tomorrow, we're going to have the same problem. Yep. It's going to spike in the morning. The Fed's going to have to come in. We have no indication from the New York Fed that they're aware of this yeah, problem. No.